Okay, they're talking about, you know, fresh preserved tissue. This is a lung. Now, do you look at it for the outside? No, it's not possibly a lung. Well, guess what? When you go inside here, that's what's inside. <laughs> All right, that's this blood coming out. That's the tissues of a lung. This is the deoxygenated side. This is as it's transferring from oxygenated to deoxygenated, or from, you know, back and forth. And, um, and that's what this is. And if anybody can deny that that's a lung, I would like to see them. And the other ones that I presented of my own are lungs as well. I think maybe I showed you, but I'll show you again. Now these are the lungs that I have. I have a ton of lungs here. But this is the one that is right here. And I took the blood out of this red, very bloody spot. And I had it sent off to the lab. And it was tested as human DNA. 100% human. No question. And they stand behind that result. Understand, I was the one that took it. If I lied and I took something that wasn't true, then it's not on them. But they said, whatever I sent them is exactly what's in the report. And it is homo sapien, mitochondrial, B genes, and uh, D loop, I believe it was. Anyway, this is the blood that literally ran out of that rock. There was bubbles of blood on that rock right there. Uh, and there was more than one. Uh, obviously, I took a shot of a good, really high-quality bubble, but that's, there was a lot of them. Now, this is pattern. You see this? You see all these little circles all over the place? Those are the alveoli right here. Now, this doesn't have the pleura on it anymore. This one still has the pleura. I have one here that has... This is a part of it, and this it still has some of its pleura, but the pleura has, well, let me show you. <laughs> it's really cool. This, my friends, is an exciting day. The day has finally come when the world is opening up. I saw on CBS today about the new giant footprints and all these things they're finding. Well, here it is, Salon. This is just today, February 2nd, a rare fossil indeed. Scientists find ancient cephalopod with soft tissue still preserved, preserved like it's a big deal. Now, it, and it is to them because they have been so against this. I'm just going to cut down to where it really tells the truth of the whole story here. <laughs> this is the second recent instance of fossil discovery with ancient soft tissue well preserved. They're staying away from me, and they're right down the street from me, University of Massachusetts. I'm in Connecticut. They found a well preserved dinosaur cloaca. That's the genital part of a, of a avian creature, and um, dragons had cloacas too. <laughs> See, this is what's going to kill them. Paleontologists discovered this cloaca in skin patterns, a dog-sized dinosaur. Well, they get a lot bigger than dog size. Now, don't for take forget, I've been talking about a flood. This is the blood I took out of this particular lung. Now, remember, everything is literally flat as a pancake on one side. If you can see that, that's how the guy died. Now, the flesh disassociated from everything creating the red bed. That's what I think because this is nothing more than iron oxides which is nothing more than your flesh when it erodes. And then there's a gray clay which is they call marl actually but if, if it was all boiled together you would have a gray clay which is organ material and some tendinous stuff. And then the black cap was all of the the combustion in the atmosphere coming down on top and it all happened virtually the same day. Now, we're going to be looking in a microscope. I got the microscope fired up here. We're going to be checking out some of these things right now. All right? And, and uh, it's extremely interesting. And the same thing with the goose. You see the goose, the side of the goose's head there? He died laying like that. And there's, this is all feldspar. Feldspar is collagen. Same thing here, feldspar. And some of it's denser, some of it's less dense. Some of it coats bones. But they're all membranes made of collagen. I understand this very, very well now. And it ends up becoming alumina silicates. And that's because aluminum bonds to stabilize these. It's, it's a nucleophilic substitution and invasion. You have to study this a little bit. It's, it's not hard to understand once you understand you know, molecular chemistry, a couple, it's, it's really not hard to understand. I'm, it, it sounds, when you say, oh, molecular chemistry and all this, no, it's simple. 
don't be confused by the terms. They mean very little. All it is is something that was here and is unstable and would break down and just destroy this and it would just, in a certain conditions, it becomes substituted with another molecule. And all they are is little bits and pieces that say, hey, you, get out. I'm coming in and this guy comes over and takes over. Case is closed. I am stable with this, but you can't be stable with this. So you get out and I'm going to come in and I'm going to substitute for you. And then they become stable. And then you end up with body parts and c complete creatures. I mean, the things I have are just beyond belief. And that is why it's so hard for anybody to accept it. And it's time for my stuff to be seen. My DNA rep I have, well, here. All right, I think somewhere I made a statement about, about aluminum going both ways, acid and salt. It just dissolves. And that's why it is aluminous silicates are in membranes. They attach to the collagens. There's some chemistry to do here, but watch this. This one was in acid. This was in salt. And that's all they are is, is aluminum cans. Watch. Gross. I didn't expect it to be quite so... Wow. wow. That is brilliant. So this is obviously a very vigorous, uh, hot reaction. You've got a lot of fumes being given off, which is a good job we, why we did it in the uh, fume cupboard. You can see all that smoke being drawn up into the extraction fan. I honestly thought the acid would have done more damage. Because when you think of acid, you always associate acids as being these, the, you know, the evil guy of the, uh, of the chemical world. I think those Pepsi cans have gotten off very lightly. Uh, they may have had their tops cut off, but they've met a fate far better than the uh, Coke cans here. The reason is the Pepsi cans were made out of steel. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. These are made out of aluminum. And the aluminum is the reactive substance. I forget, acetateric or something, I forget what they call it. But it goes both ways to the salts, uh, to the acid side and to the salt side, it just breaks down. And that's why all Every single felspar, 100%, and there are tons of different types of felspar. As you see, that's felspar, this is felspar, the foot is felspar, the, the um, goose head is... Uh, every layer of tissue that is on the exterior or is a membrane is felspar. And it is all able to stabilize with aluminum and they call it aluminum silicates and it always ends up with ALO8 8 oxygens um, I really haven't looked that deep into that chemistry but because this is pretty new a lot of this stuff is new and and a lot of the stuff that relates to enzymes and all that they really didn't have never considered much about it they just thought your body created all these enzymes and no, your body doesn't create anything <laughs> it's nothing at all bacteria does literally everything in your body a hundred percent it creates the catalyst the enzymes the mucosa the serosa it creates every bit of chemicals it breaks down every molecule that goes into your body if you don't have the right bacteria in your digestive system you are sick or you are in a pre-existing condition to be invaded because you, your, your tissues are not protected by these membrane bound bacteria. They live in these membranes that separate you from the rest of the gook in the world. And that's the problem right now. People are not, they don't have a healthy gut. Okay, so we're talking about nucleophilic substitution, which means that the, the aluminum, all breaking down like I just showed you, affects both acid types and salt types and bonds to them and creates aluminous silicates in felspar and this is um, why this happens now in chemistry the nucleophile is a chemical species now they don't understand what a chemical species is what does that mean it means it's an exact molecule but it's extremely elegant and what created it Bacteria created it. That's why you stay healthy when you have good bacteria in your gut. I know I keep going this way and that way with my research, but it all leads to being healthy and having good bacteria to create the enzymes and catalysts that break down the things in your body. Also, they create chemical species that induce and create mucosa and serosa. 
which is the chemical attack species that goes out to attack invaders. They create slime, which is the mucosa and mucus and so forth on the layers of your membranes, because that's where they live, in the membranes. That's the way they live. That's what they protect. That's their job. We've killed them with antibiotics. And now if you don't replace them, and we're, I have a group, I'm going to be showing something, I'm one of the proudest things that I have done in my research is to get Marguerite O'Reilly to cure her son of autism. And we're going to go into that because she has a plan now. She's, she's cured and helped hundreds of people. And I just talked to her yesterday. I'm going to be doing a video about this because somebody could contact me. They have twins with all kinds of problems. And they wanted to know if Marguerite could help. And so obviously she jumps right in. Wonderful person. She ended up going to Harvard, studying all about everything. And she's cured her son from autism absolutely fabulous and uh, this started because she contacted me or I'm not even sure how we got together but she they were gonna put her son in a locked ward because he was just he never spoke he was stimming and humming and screaming and he was abusive and, and, and self-inflicting himself and with injuries and all kinds of things and they, there was no help for him whatsoever and this was in Ireland so that's a proud moment for me but anyway that's like I say, I'm sorry I give it this way and that way, but it, it all relates to to everything. Nothing is one little piece. And that's the problem I'm running into with academia and experts. They think they, they know one little piece of it and that's it. And, and they want to refer to everybody else. And no, really, nobody knows that, the full picture. you got to have the whole package, baby. And we got the package here. Because i got hundreds and literally thousands of people that I can rely on to present me with things. They don't know what's, what it is necessarily, but they know I'd be interested. <laughs> so, I, and, and if I can put a piece here and a piece here and a piece here together and they all fit together and they're all a little bit different, but they all interact and they make the package, then we move on through the research. And that's, that's just what I like to do. So, uh, you know, like I say, I have a lot, a lot, a lot of informants. <laughs> they bring forth things that nobody will talk about. And they tell me, they say, I can't say to anything to this. I can't show this to anybody. You're the only one I can show this to. And that's, they're right, because you do. And trust me, you're going to be assaulted. I guarantee it. I was just assaulted by a geologist on, on um, YouTube the other day. But they kicked the wrong puppy this time. 